Hello, everyone. Hello, friends. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of my show, and I'm your host, Belinda Johnson. And I am here to share with you another story, another um, guest that we have on. If you're new to this this this, this show, what we, I like to do basically is to share um, the health journeys of everyday people, just like you and myself, who has who have gone through amazing health transformation just by simply changing their lifestyle. And so, and I'd like to do this because I want to empower you all to understand that you too can start your own journey, or kind of like pick up from where you left off, right? So, um, and so uh, today's episode is no different. Today we have Mandy. So she's gonna share her story of her health transformation and also how it relates to her diagnosis of epilepsy. So this is super interesting. And Mandy, so thank you very much for joining because I'm super excited to hear your story. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so before we start, I'd like for you to, if, if you can please share a little about yourself, if you know, what you do for work, your family, et cetera, anything of that nature. So we can get a brief idea of yeah. Um, oh, man, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, you know, married, mother of three kids, um, you know, busy kind of, I'm a Girl Scout leader, you know, nice. the kids, you know, volunteering with school. So I'm like running around. Um, I work in the broadcast industry. So um, digital marketing, TV marketing, um, just kind of that average person just trying to get through the day, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, so let us get into your story. So tell us, when did this all happen? Like, what was the big? How did it all start? Let's let's start again. Yeah. Um. You know. Okay. So I guess growing up, I was always the big kid, right? Like, um, I actually have a twin sister. Oh. Uh, okay. And I don't know if you remember there. There's a movie um, called Twins with Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes. Uh, She's Arnold Schwarzenegger and I'm Danny DeVito. I'm not even kidding. She's a four inches taller. She's athletic and slim. And I'm like, Danny DeVito. Um, so it was something I've always struggled with in my life. You know, you kind of go up and down, you try the fads, you, you know, you read about this cleanse or you read about what you can do. And, um, you know, I had kids and then the weight piles on and piles on with each kiddo. Um, and I was just in so much pain. My I uh, topped at 291 pounds. Mm. Um, I um, I was out of breath walking up the stairs. I developed um, like exercise, like induced asthma. Like my my lungs just couldn't keep up. Mm -hmm. um, and then my blood pressure started skyrocketing. And I've always had low blood pressure, so that triggered to find a better solution. Mm -hmm. And because of my marketing and working with businesses, there's a business um, called Monarch Medical Weight Loss. And it essentially is through your health insurance, working with nurse practitioners, um, you know, developing like a plan um, where you just, you know, use everyday food and a better structure mm. um, to um, kind of gain more of a healthy lifestyle. So started that in 2018 um, and it just worked for me. And you know, I'm, is small meals many times a day, focus on protein, caloric restriction. And I'm so busy, like not having to sit down for a big meal or I could just grab me a yogurt and a protein bar. I was like, this is good. This is good. Mm -hmm. um, hit my goal. I lost a hundred and sixteen pounds in a year. So wow, it was that's good. quick. It was crazy quick. That's good. That's good. Um, and then just really kept going um, until I hit about a hundred and 21 pounds. And then I'm like, I'm good. Feeling good. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. Um, but I was like skinny fat, you know, and you lose that much weight and there are things that are not hanging very well anymore. <laughs> um, so I really had to, I had a transition. I had a transition out of weight loss to maintenance and that's a hard thing to do. Mm, okay. So tell us a little bit about like, uh, well, let's, before we get to that part. So you said you, you use that Monarch, um, uh, medical weight loss. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it was just food pl meal planning and you said you were being followed by a nurse practitioner. So what, were yeah. the, so what were the challenges and, um, in that or the easy and as well as the challenging parts in, in, in following those plans? Right. I mean, it was great because I could use my own food, right. Okay. It wasn't one of those plans where it's like heat up this meal and, you know, um, I weighed in weekly with uh, medical assistants and, you know, we, they really charted like my blood pressure and my health, um, you know, factors. And then every month I got to meet with a nurse practitioner and we'd look over my food log and we'd look over my, how I was doing. So the support was amazing. And that's mm -hmm. the biggest plus I will tell anybody, if, you know, 
if you really need something with structure and something with that base level of um, nutrition that isn't just, you know, eat this food and then <laughs> figure it out later. The cons was um, it's very fast weight loss. Obviously, okay. they're a business, right? So yeah. they're in the business of losing weight. Right. Um, I ended the program at 1,200 calories. That's super low. Um, I lost my hair. This is actually doing really good. <laughs> um, lost my eyelashes. Like, really? I, I mean, yeah, because my body would take that very low amount of calories and be like, well, we, we need you to live. <laughs> so we're not going to put it into your hair or your skin right now. We're just going to focus on, you know, keeping your heartbeat going. Um, and I mean, I learned a baseline about nutrition. Like I learned, okay, protein is a, a very important macronutrient as far as like really feeling satiated, but it, that's where it was at. That's where it was like, I just knew that calories and protein and I became afraid of calories you know, I became obsessed, right? Right. Especially at the end too. It's like, oh my God, I hit a hundred pounds and then I plateaued. I'm like, no. Mm. So that, that was tough. That was tough. I mean, I knew it was a great program, but there are pros and cons to anything you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Okay. So then what happened after that, that um, portion? So that's like a year later. So that's like in 2019, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so tell us about the whole new diagnosis of epilepsy and how that came into play. Yeah. So I stopped the program in June of 2019, okay. struggled with maintenance, right? Because I, I was afraid to eat. I was mm -hmm. afraid of a calorie. I didn't know really nutrition besides really what they had taught me. Um, really yo-yoed up and down, couldn't find my groove. Um, and then in um, September of 2019, I was on a Girl Scout camping trip, you know, just having fun with my with my girls and went to go wake a girl up. Um, she was on breakfast duty and I just collapsed. I just outside her tent collapsed yeah. and I don't remember anything, honestly. Um, kudos to that girl. Her name's Katie. She screamed so loud to get help. <laughs> she told me after the fact, she goes, no one could hear me. And I kept screaming. And I was like, oh, gosh, you're amazing. Um, and I just woke up in my co-leader's arms. I was super confused. I was embarrassed because I had this whole crowd of people around me. And she was holding me um, because I had a grand mal seizure. So the full, wow. you, know, you know, arm Shake, movement, yep, shaking, yep. everything. And she was trying to tell me, I was trying to get up and she was trying to tell me you had a seizure, you had a seizure. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't have seizures. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, you know, ambulance was on its way and I just was so confused. And it probably took me halfway to the hospital before I was like, wait, I was at a camp out. Wait, I was waking up Katie. Like it really just mind numbs you. Um, so went, that happened. <laughs> Um, was referred to a neurologist and I fully, you know, I had the MRI, I had an EEG and I fully expected they were just going to tell me, well, we don't know why that happened, mm -hmm. but you know, keep tabs. And instead in November, she, uh, she diagnosed me with epilepsy. Um, I have two forms of epilepsy, um, which evidently a neurologist thinks is the coolest thing ever. Um, I have, um, genetic, uh, generalized epilepsy. Okay. Um, and then, which is, um, you know, the grand mal seizures, some of those more typical mm -hmm. seizures that you're used to seeing. And then I have focal tendencies um, where I have another spot in my brain where I have more of a focalized um, epilepsy. So those, those seizures look like, you know, when you have like, like a brain fart and you're just like, what? Oh, I can't finish my sentence. What was I thinking of? I have, I have that. You know, so, and now looking back too, because it's very rare to be diagnosed with epilepsy as an adult. Right. I look back and I'm like, oh, that's, so that, that's what all Wait a minute. Right? <laughs> wow. That was fantastic. That explains so, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And there was like, at one point I collapsed in college um, oh, okay. and my, mo my mom was on the phone with me. She freaked out. She called and she could hear me. And she was like, I think she had a seizure. Um, cause I was on the phone with her. Poor thing. Never do that to your mother. No, um, no kidding. And she tried to tell the doctor, she goes, I think she had a seizure. I could hear her. 
And the doctor goes, well, if I diagnose her with a seizure, then she'll lose her driver's license. So we're just going to say that she had um, in, um, vertigo. So looking back, you're like, dude, I could have, this has been all going on all my life. Yeah, so, no kidding. And it was hard too, because it's like, I'm now in the healthiest I've ever been. Right. And all of a sudden I get this life-changing diagnosis. And I'm just like, wow, how do you go, how do you move from that, you know? Yeah. So what was the plan? So when your doctor told you this, like what were some of the thoughts that were going through your head and, and what was the plan that he or she, she suggested? So she obviously, you know, you get put on um, anti-seizure medication and anyone with epilepsy, it's very unique to the person, right? So they always kid around that with anti-seizure medication, you have to kind of find your cocktail, mm -hmm. right? Like what works well with you. Yep. Yep. So she put me on anti-seizure medication and I hated every minute. Mm. You know, I just, it is a brain altering chemical, Yes. you know, and it is, I was, I was depressed. I was sad. I couldn't sleep. And then I could sleep like, and my kids were watching this. Right. And my girls witnessed the seizure. So then we're kind of dealing with that too. Wow. Okay. Um, and how old and, are they? Um, well now they're 14 and 11. So they would have been uh, 12 and nine. Wow. That's pretty young. Yeah. That's kind of traumatizing. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. Yeah. Um, so I'm on this medication. I'm I'm hating every because I'm a pretty positive person, and all of a sudden I just got, I just didn't want to do anything. I just hated life. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to do anything. And then um, then I had my second seizure in January of 2020 mm. um, in my kitchen in front of all my kids, and I have a younger son. Mm. So um, and he was seven at the time. Okay. Um, and I was mad because I'm like, but I'm on medication and I hate it. But right. why would you, why would you do that? Life, why would you do that? And um, I just, they upped my dosage of my medication, which I then hated more. Of course. And so yeah. I, I started diving into research. I started researching epilepsy, obviously, when I was diagnosed. But because I had kind of changed my lifestyle, I was like, okay, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way. I mean, of course, I'm going to be on medication. I'm not saying that, but there's got to be a way to help offset the side effects because this is the mom I don't want to be. And um, that's where I found, um, I started diving into nutrition mm -hmm. and, um, you know, researching different diets that they put kids on and really learning about macronutrients and micronutrients and feeding your body and that food, that calories and food are really that fuel. Because at that point, I still wasn't eating right, you know, and um, and really learning my triggers. And I, one of my triggers, my main one is blood sugar. Um, okay. So learning then how to use food and make sure and I'm properly fueling myself. And um, because the second seizure, because my blood sugar crashed hardcore, like I, because I ate licorice for dinner. I don't ever advise <laughs> anyone to eat like licorice for dinner, but I was working late in the office and it was the only thing there and I was hungry. Um, like it it'll have to do. You gotta, you know, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. So I, um, that's what went kind of that direction where it's like, I have the second seizure in my house. So thank God I wasn't driving. Right. I mean, right. I literally been home for 10 minutes and then had the second seizure. I think there's a higher power that just keeps an Listen. eye on. Okay. Yeah. There's so many things. Like the first seizure, I was on a Girl Scout trip. I could have been driving. We we're going to do a beach cleanup. I could have been driving them. Yeah. Like you just like, okay, let's look at the bright spots in this. Um, when the paramedics came for the second seizure, they tested my blood sugar and it was like 53. Wow. It had crashed. Yes. And so, and then they upped my dosage. And so I started learning, okay, my trigger is my blood sugar. And it's not it's when I eat processed sugars. Mm. I, to this day, can't go to a birthday party and eat, eat a piece of cake unless, A, I put some kind of fat source with it, or I just avoid the cake because wow. okay. it will crush my blood sugar. So now I'm seeing an endocrinologist and we're trying to learn what the heck my pancreas is doing, which could be connected to, it was used to helping, you know, a 300 pound woman kind of survive. And yes. now we've got to figure out, you know, a new way but this, you know, smaller, smaller person. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. I've, I've now, I've I can't even tell you how many seizures I've now caught. Um, 
because I've learned my triggers, I've learned awesome. what it feels like. Yes. Um, the aura, huh? The aura, I, I know, I know. And there was a, especially one point where I, I was this close to collapsing and my husband came and grabbed me and he threw a string cheese in my mouth. Like, I can't even tell you, like, he's like, eat this. Um, and I've now like, I've learned where nutrition helps, right? Where I've, I've now taken, okay, it's not about a diet isn't about cutting calories, right? Yes. A diet is taking care of yourself and fueling Absolutely. yourself um, and making you feel like your best self. So I have epilepsy, but I, I feel better every day. Plus they changed my medications. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was like, get me off this stuff. <laughs> So that's good. So are you, you're on totally different ones or they, did they just decrease the amount of medications you were on? No, I'm on totally different ones. Okay. I, I, I kind of demanded it. You know, you gotta, you gotta stand up, for yourself. stand up for yourself. And I just said, look, I, I am an unhappy person and that's not natural for me. So we explored different routes. Um, so I'm now on a different medication. We've had to alter with the dosage because I've caught a few, you know, that would have happened um, but so much better, so much better, but it's interesting if I forget my meds because I just forget, I feel it. It's mm. still very altering. It's, it's hard. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about like the, the blood sugar thing that, that to me is really, um, it's really interesting, um, that, you know, you caught that that was one of your triggers. Like are there other triggers that you have experienced or have you noticed any other triggers besides the blood sugar? Or is that like the main one, only one? I mean, I think that's the main one. I mean, there are others. Okay. I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, blood sugar is going to trigger a, a seizure in a, you know, in a relatively healthy person, right? If your blood sugar crashes, it could trigger a seizure. If with a person in epilepsy, it's it's not good. You know, it's it's okay. it's more likely. So, blood sugar is a big one for me. Um, stress is a huge one for me, um, which doesn't help when you're a mom of three and you work full time. And I was just about to say, okay, so like, how, do you, how do you, you're like, just take your time. I'm like, what time? <laughs> so that's what I'm still working on. Sleep is a big one. Yeah. Um, okay. I am the woman who like thrived and I'm like, I can get four hours of sleep and be fine. No, I can't. Even. <laughs> so um, those three really are the main ones for me. Um, the, you know, the sleep I can control, the stress we're getting there. I'm meditating. I've never meditated before, but I'm all about trying to like incorporate new things and try new things um, because I don't want them to increase my dosage. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm one year seizure free. So that's awesome. I mean, I, t I mean, there I'll do what I need to do yeah. that my kids don't have to witness that again. Yeah. You absolutely. Know, that I stay healthy. So I'm trying to, the sleep things are I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm trying. sleep is always hard. <laughs> yes. I'm trying. No, the sleep is always hard because like I and I can relate because um in that I am I'm a I'm a mom full time and I'm a full time, you know, nurse. I work as a nurse full time and then I have four kids. So it's like Oh dang. Yeah, yeah, you know, because so now the sleep thing, I get it. And the youngest is like 10 months. So it's like Oh man, you're doing it. So doing I, it. I totally get it. So you, you you sleep when you can and you're hoping that what you get is just enough to <laughs> It's good sleep too. Right, right. Like there's I know. a difference. The eyes can be closed, but it could be nothing. Listen, so it's true. It is yeah. so very true. It is so very true. So now, does your doctor are your doctors aware um, of the fact that you have noticed what your triggers are, and they yeah. are they okay? They're very like complimentary of it because there's two roads people could go down. Right, you get diagnosed with really anything, and you can go down this "woe is me," "oh my gosh." you know, this sucks. I guess I just have to live with this. And then there's a road I chose to go down with like, okay, how can I make this better? And how can I like help myself? And so my neurologist is like, you know, sometimes it's 50, 50 and I'm really glad you went down this path. And I don't think, I think I would have gone down the other path if I was still that 300 pound person. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you do like, I, you, I don't remember that person. I was depressed all the time. I was, I'm not confident. I hated going. I mean, try to go to a restaurant and try to fit into a booth yeah. it is the most embarrassing, yeah. hardcore. Like I remember walking, I'd be with clients, right? I was taking them out to like, lunch. And I remember walking to the booth and going, oh my God, oh my God, I hope I fit. I hope I fit. So oh, wow. I just wonder if I was that 300 pound person, 
if I would have taken this diagnosis the same way. And I don't think I would have. Mm. I don't think I would have. I think the idea that I had this like more healthy mindset and that yes. nutrition had become a part of my life, I think that's what has made me keep it at bay. Because every time you have a seizure, you lose your driver's license for 90 days. And as a mom, uh-uh. yeah, you can't, you can't. <laughs> So, You're like, nah, I can't. I need to drive. I have to take kids' so, places. Uh-uh. <laughs> that was hard. Um, so you, you, I'm just glad it went down the right path for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So, it, okay. So it, initially you said that you, even after, it sounded as if you, even after you did um, that program with the the, wait, the nurse practitioners and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. that it sounded like your your eating habits were still a little bit off. Am I correct in that? Yeah, totally. Okay. Totally. So now, so now that you've learned how, what are some of the things that you've learned on your own, especially since after epilepsy that you've incorporated and that you're still using right now? Some of the tips yeah. and techniques. Um, so after I finished the program, it was still very small amounts of food. Okay. Um, I was so scared to gain my weight back. Right. Because everyone just watched this amazing transformation. Mm-hmm. Right. And they were mm-hmm. so complimentary. And then you hit your goal. And then the most well-intending person is like, well, are you afraid you're going to gain your weight back? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. My, my neighbor's nephew's cousin like lost a hundred pounds and then he gained his weight back. I'm just like, y'all, what, what are you, <laughs> dude? Like you're not <laughs> helping right now. <laughs> you're not helping. So then I was really scared to eat. Yes, you know, yes, I was okay. super scared to eat. And so my body just couldn't recover. So once I really dove into nutrition, I've actually learned eating is fuel Mm -hmm. and your body needs it. Your body needs the calories. Um, And then you can really take macronutrients like, you know, protein, carbs, and fat and utilize them to really make your day the best day. Um, Like I know if I'm going to go work out. So now I've become a complete gym nerd. It's ridiculous. Um, if I'm going to go work out, I need to have a nice fast acting carb. Um, I'll partner it with a slow digesting carb to really keep me fueled and some protein and then, but no fat, um, because that will slow the absorption. And then I know when I get home, I need to have another fast acting carb to kind of refuel the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know my biggest one is I'm an afternoon snacker, right? You're sitting Mm -hmm. working and, afternoons kill me. They completely kill me. I know for lunch, if I do a higher fat lunch, right? Yep. Some avocado on a salad, a little peanut butter, it will get me through the, you know, that afternoon crash. Okay. So those are the little things I've learned. Um, I've learned I sleep better. You know, that's one of the things, right? With epilepsy, I learned that I sleep better. Um, if I have more nutrition and more calories and that's like good. a higher fat, um, I've learned that um, I've got, you know, my hair's growing back. Like your body just That's needs awesome. calories and I'm no longer scared of a calorie. I'm no yes. longer, I know I can balance life. So, Hey, if I'm going to go out with friends, have a, you know, a glass of wine or maybe like share a fattier food, I can no biggie. And just the next day I can just go right back to what I'm doing and your body bounces back. So That's awesome. it's this relief that you learn um, that I'm still using today. That is awesome. That's awesome. So it's like a work in progress. It's like you try different things and see what's happening. So, and then once you find what you like, then you kind of like stay there. Now the trick is to like stay there and maintain it. Stay there. That's hard. And what the epilepsy t- taught me is so keto, high fat is, is always used in children with epilepsy. Now don't, don't take my carbs away. I tried it. <laughs> Not my thing. Yep. Bravo to anybody who that's their thing, right? I couldn't do it. But when I set my macros, I will never be a low fat macro. I will always keep a nice balance, you know, carbs and fat. Um, because if I, I'm not feeding my brain, yes. if I don't have higher amounts of fat in my diet. Yeah. And yeah. if you can do a low fat, fantastic. But for my health and my epilepsy, I can't do it. That's awesome. And I like how you said, like, it's it's for you. That's what you can do. Like the next person mm-hmm. may not be able to. It's uh, again, this is almost like a personal journey. Like each and every person is different. So it's like, what can you do? What can you maintain? What can you, what works better for you for your health, overall health? And if you have specific conditions, what can work with that condition as well? It's a, it's about finding what you can do and feel good and be sustainable. And so if you can do that with intermittent fasting, you do you. Keto, fantastic. Um, I do it with like more of a macro approach now. Um, and that's my thing. 
So it's it's always really disappointing when I see people we're talking a little bit about Instagram and yeah. um, what it shows and doesn't show. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> them pushing that that fad diet. Well, hey, that might have worked for you and that's fantastic and all power to you and congrats. But that's not going to work for 90% of the audience that you're speaking yes. to. So yes. um, when I talk to people, because now when you lose weight, everyone's, okay, well, help me what figure out you? what I'm going to yeah. do. What'd you do? And I just said, well, I'm not going to tell you what I did. But what works for you? And I'll get, you know, and I can maybe tell you a few things here and there. And so. one thing, it's, it's nice and funny that you said that, because one thing I've also noticed, too, like even with um, what well, I've been interviewing different people and then they'll start off with this. Right. And they're like, oh, I started with uh, keto and then eventually ends up being like, you know, uh, ends up not necessarily being only keto. Like they start adding carbs because at some point you have to figure out what's sustainable. So you can start mm -hmm. off with one plan or one diet and then after mm -hmm. that realize okay i can only do this for 90 days but then i cannot continue this for like the rest of my life right so you have right. to aim for a sustainability as opposed to just okay temporary you know what i mean now it's okay to start with something temporary but then you have to also aim for a sustain sustainability as well right and and the plan that monarch put me on was fantastic for the year it was perfect for that part of my life yes yes i yes. couldn't do it now yeah it was what you know jumped me into nutrition and you know, kind of taught me those steps It put me in a healthier body, but that's not sustainable right, for me. Right, it right. wasn't, you know, and my life has changed too. I'm not running around kids. So I can actually take time and eat more three, four meals, bigger meals a day versus uh, the program was about smaller meals. Um, and I actually want to, I actually like feeling that nutrition, like slowing down and being like, all right, let's get going for the right. day. We're going to go work out. Let's get some carbs in. It's, it's therapy. Weirdly right. so. I, right, right, right. Now, one thing you mentioned with Mon Monarch is, um, I, and I think, correct me if, if I'm wrong, if, is the goal of the program to start their clients on the on a nutritious, on a, on a uh, proper nutrition pathway? Is that the ultimate goal? Are they, are they expecting like the plan that they give to their clients supposed to like be sustainable? Do you understand you know, what I'm I saying? think, yeah, I think, um, I mean, the goal is to help you lose weight and get healthier. And the goal is to find, it's not like a, a cookie cutter approach, okay. right? So, I mean, it's all about calories and protein, but they kind of work with the individual to figure out what, what fits for them. Um, I have told her, the executive director, I'm like, you know, and I know it's what they want to help their clients and create sustainability, but they need a maintenance program mm. because, you know, I know they're wanting to teach that. And they really are working with you on, okay, let's look at your diary. Okay, maybe your carbs could be lower, even though you're hitting your protein, you know, that they prescribe, right? Um, but I think they're just missing that next step, mm. right? They're missing that that maintenance. They're missing taking it maybe a step further. Um, but they're helping people with, with weight loss. But like any program, you know, there's some people can gain the weight back. Right. So they have that next step. Yeah, that would be it's ideal. Hard. It's yeah. hard. And yeah. getting diagnosed with epilepsy was kind of my next step. Mm -hmm. Not weird. I think that's weird. It, it is. But then it, <laughs> it, it, it turned out it is in one way. But then yeah. you, know, like, you were able to take that experience and turn it into something good. And I think that's what makes your story even more beautiful. Because like you said, you could have gone off the other way the pathway and kind of been sad and well you know but then you're like okay this is where we are now what can we do how can we approach this how can we make yeah. this better because i don't want to live like you know on the meds like forever forever so that i want to drive <laughs> don't, don't take away my driver's license and my right. uh, my middle daughter is you know she still remembers mom having seizures she witnessed mm -hmm. the the two of them mm -hmm. and she's still like so now we're trying to help her like she's she still has some fear in her Mm. So I never want to see my kids have that fear. Yes. So I am constantly like, plus I bring nutrition in and, you know, now my kids are kind of part of it. And um, I always let her know, I'm like, you know what? Mom's taking care of herself. Mom's learned so much. You know, I got you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. I'm yeah. not doing anything to make you worry. Right, but, right, right. Well, the perfect segue into like, how do you now incorporate the healthy eating into your family? You, you mentioned that you've already started. So tell us like, how, what does that look like with your family? Um, well, so it's all about, it's all about balance, right? Um, I don't want, so I have, you know, two girls and then a, a younger boy that my boy is like doing his thing. He's nine, <laughs> you know, whatnot. Um, 
my two girls are kind of going into that age of life where they start feeling that peer pressure, right? That pressure to be, you know, be thin or they're hearing things from their peers. Um, and then my younger daughter is actually very similar to my body type when I was growing up. She's a little, you know, a little bigger. So it's all about, um, I tell her it's about balance. I'm like, all right, you want to, you want to eat that, you know, that I can't even think of, you know, that, um, you know, like potato. waffle or yeah. something yeah. or whatever. I'm like, all right, just throw some fruit on it, throw a little peanut butter on it, you know, make sure you're hitting everything. Um, and then about keeping her active, well, keeping all of them active. Um, I mean, being stuck at home, being homeschooled isn't helping <laughs> yeah, with no, that, right? but, um, <laughs> we're going outside. <laughs> we're going outside. I've kicked them out. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, Letting, you know, teaching that, okay, mom's, mom's about to go work out. Like literally I tell them I'm, I'm going to go work out. Um, Saturdays are a huge workout day. So I was talking to her yesterday and I was packing an apple and I was like, see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm packing an apple because I was, I was doing re two really intensive workouts. And I knew for me, I needed something fast digesting in the middle mm -hmm. so I could give myself that boost of energy. So it is just showing by example, leading by example, mm -hmm. but then like, I don't want them to count calories, but I want them to be aware of how they can make that meal the best for them. So, and, Absolutely. And, mm -hmm, and, you know, and have a piece of fruit with that, right? Yes. Like, you know, you want to try some bok choy, like, I mean, they didn't like it, but you know, <laughs> you know, it's, um, my older daughter, um, started kind of going through, you know, freshman in high school and started yeah. questioning her eating habits in a negative way. Mm. And then I was like, Hey, hun, it's going to be fine. Like, let's just try this and try this. And right. you know, avocado fat is not bad. Like that right. Right. saves my brain. So, right. so yeah, we're trying, it's, it's a, it's a learning opportunity every day. And you know, some days they have the pizza, they have the ice cream. Some days I have the pizza and the ice cream, but <laughs> it's just about jumping in and balance. Right. Right. And being and active. Absolutely. And education, like you mentioned, is key. Like just, you know, letting them know, like, no, fat is not horrible because they're here. Oh, you get fat. If you, but it's like, well, what kind of fats are people talking about? You can't just right. generalize fats and say fats when there's there's right. good, healthy fats and then there's the not so healthy fat. So. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's that's definitely key. So tell us about your um, workout routine. What does that look like? Oh, it's in training. It's insane. Um, the gym has become my therapy, right? Like. Okay you stressful mom, you know, working, I can go to the gym, throw some headphones on and just do my thing. Um, so it's a lot of weightlifting. Um, I, um, I got skinny fat, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you lose weight that quick. Things are not now hanging where they're supposed to be. I, I was skinny fat. I lost a lot of muscle. So it's about lifting. Yep. And then I do, um, I've become in love with spin classes, which okay. those, we, those scared the crap out of me, you know, <laughs> beforehand. Um, I do some hit exercises, um, nice. hit okay. classes. Mm -hmm. um, I've created such a cool community. I have a group of friends that we text way too much um, <laughs> about, you know, workouts. And I didn't step foot, though, in a gym until I lost 80 pounds. Wow. So it's but it's changed me. Like yeah. I woke up this morning and threw leggings on. I was like, all right, we're going to go to the gym. Um, it's just it's just my, me now. So, yeah, I um but like Saturdays are pretty intense. I do a spin class, then a hit class. So I got to, got to fuel it in between, but nice. I probably lift, I lift three, four times a week. And then I do those cardio classes like two times a week. Okay. Okay. So you kind of like alternate. Yeah. I alternate. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. So. That's nice. Oh my gosh. That's so wonderful. I just love your story. It was really, huh. really, really, really great. So what are some of your, um, we're starting to wind down a little bit. I got a few more questions for you, but like, what are some of the, um, are, are there other goals that you're working towards or, um, are you just, is it simply maintenance or what do you have going on for now? Um, so I've learned the whole process, right. Of growing muscle, um, like that, you know, cut and bulk and maintenance and reverse. So last year in order to help fix my metabolism, I reverse dieted up, right. When you increase your calories. Um, and then my goal as we went into 2021, um, is to really grow as much grow muscle and, um, kind of feel like a healthier version of myself. Like, you know, not like, I don't want to become like so buff that I'm scary looking, but, um, I just want to be stronger. I just really want to be stronger. Um, 
So it's it's nice to have a goal that isn't centered centered around a number. Right. Absolutely. Really nice. Yeah. Um, and then using um, nutrition to kind of fuel that. Like Absolutely. I now know um, I can go at maintenance calories and do my thing. And since I had reversed those calories up, it's a lot of calories. It's like, let's go. Nice. So. <laughs> but then you're also working out too. So you kind of like uh-huh. have to fuel yourself. It's not like yeah. you're increasing your calories and not doing anything. So right. You're putting out as much as you're putting in as right. well. So that's right. awesome. And it's really monitoring that every day because yeah, yeah. I want to make sure I don't put myself in a caloric deficit that is unhealthy. Yes. So it's keeping, you know, if I'm trying to cut it down, it's keeping an appropriate deficit. A, a deficit should never be a thousand calories a day. Like that two pounds a week, that's actually so unhealthy. Yeah. That's so nice. a deficit needs to be a couple hundred and yeah. then it needs to include that exercise. Yeah. So absolutely. if you can create a deficit just with exercise, fantastic. You go you and you go eat that ego, right? Yeah. Um, but it should be a, a mix. It should be diet with exercise. So absolutely, that's, that's what I've kind of learned and getting stronger and teaching my kids, you know, making them jump on the trampoline. Uh, my daughter comes to the gym with me. I mean, obviously mm. for COVID, um, yes. <laughs> you know, but she'll go biking now. Um, we started um, trying to run 5Ks. I don't run. Um, mm. I don't mean how I like it. <laughs> There are things that should not move like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it just, that's the goal. It's just a healthier lifestyle and getting a little stronger. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, what advice would you give to um, a mom um, who's, uh, you know, who's right now may, may have had a recent diagnosis of whatever it may be and who may just feel a little down and depressed about it or sad about it, maybe not depressed, yeah. but, you know, just overwhelmed or sad, you know, she's mom, she's working, or maybe she's not, but she's a st- she's at home now and the kids are also at home. So <laughs> what words of encouragement do you have for that mom who might be struggling right now? You know, um, learning is the most powerful medicine you can do. Um, so, well, I guess a, I'll say, um, it's okay to be, take time for you. Right. Like, you know, ask for help. Like if you are that, I mean, I've been, I was a stay at home mom with three young babies for five years. Um, there's no lunch breaks. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so take time for you, but then learn, um, become in tune with, you know, really feeling like I feel my triggers because I'm pretty in tune with what my body does and I know how to feel it. So, and, and, I would hate, I don't want, you're going to learn, you're going to research, but then you kind of have to apply it to you because it's not going to be textbook. So take care of yourself, be in tune with who you are. Um, You're going to fall. Just get right back up. Yeah. Consistency every day. And just, I tell, I tell myself, so sometimes my medication does put me down. Like I'll I'll have a bad day Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I give myself permission to have a bad day. Yes. So you're feeling depressed. You don't know what you're doing. Give yourself permission to have a bad day. Yes. And then just try to move forward from it and like, okay, I'm having a bad day, but I'll go out for a walk or I'm having a bad day and it's okay. And I'm going to go watch a movie with my kids. Right. You just take care of yourself. Right. Oh, that, that's so that's so good. Thank you so much for that, Mandy, because I know as moms, um, sometimes we struggle. We're so busy giving of ourselves to others, the mm-hmm. children, the husband, the spouse, um, or maybe just other family members if, if um, someone's a single mom. And so sometimes we often we can neglect ourselves. And so that's a very good reminder of how much how, you know, we need to really invest in self-care, because, you know, in order for us to be able to care for others, we have to be able to be our best selves, at least some form of healthy, <laughs> be some yes. form of healthy in order to care for others. So. Um, thank you for those words of encouragement yeah. to those moms. Thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, um, no, thank you. Yeah, that was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. So for um, all of you guys watching, I hope you really enjoyed Mandy's story. And this, again, goes to show how much um, lifestyle can play a role in not only in our physical health and losing weight and all that, but also the, the stuff that we don't even know about, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, um, and all the stuff that's on, on the inside. And so it helps deal with a lot of chronic illnesses or maybe not chronic, but just illnesses that we may not even think of. And because when we're eating, our food takes our, our body takes our food and breaks it down and use all the different little nutrients in ways that we may never, we will never comprehend and even know, like science have only given us a glimpse yeah. of, of, of the things that happens when our, food, well, our body breaks down our food. This is why it's so, so, so very important for us to really feed our bodies 
well and feed not just junk but feed it and feed it well so yeah. i hope this um story her, uh, mandy's story really inspires you all to understand the importance of nutrition march is nutrition um awareness month or nutrition month or something like that so, i didn't know that it's been yeah <laughs> so um that it's really cool because we really get to focus on nutrition um this month and in terms of your stories and the others to follow and just in general so this month make a conscious effort to really put um, some uh, put some thought into what we're eating and really to be mindful of what we're eating and how it affects our body. You know, like Mandy, you really had to be aware of the fact that, you know, hey, it's, it's my blood sugar that kind of triggers that. So we need to kind of like really pay attention to what's going on in our bodies. So, um, and uh, one last thing, just a disclaimer, just that understand that Mandy was was um, under the supervision of a practitioner when she was doing all these things. So. Neither one of us here is let, saying that, you know, you have to go out and try any of these things on your own, but it's, especially when you're dealing with a, a, a chronic condition, right? Mm -hmm. So you right. really want to be under the guidance of, of, of a practitioner, doctor, yeah. nurse, practi practitioner of some sort that can help monitor your medication if you need medication, your levels of whatever sort it is. So please understand that that's just as important too as well. And also communication. So if you're gonna be trying these different things, please communicate to your healthcare practitioner that you are interested and you wanna do this and pay attention to what's happening so that you can communicate and they can therefore know how best to guide you. So yeah. thank you again for watching. Um, please comment, subscribe and share with family members and friends and just strangers, who cares, just share. <laughs> <laughs> just share with everybody. <laughs> thank you so much, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, please comment below. Thank you again.